Hello our most valued student, my name is Confident. Welcome to our 24 minute lesson. This is Meccano Technology in M3 and in this particular lesson I want us to look at power transmission and the main part of the lesson is to look at some uh, basic introductions and mainly we are going to look at the calculations that are involving power transmissions. It says a wedge belt drive is to be installed between an electric motor and a compressor. The following information is given. So you can see they gave the information in the form of a table. And then with this they are saying, number one, calculate the speed ratio. And if you still remember, uh, I will try to calculate it in here. We say speed ratio. In this case, speed ratio. We said you have to focus on faster pulley divided by the smaller pulley. So the faster pulley in this case, this is the number with R per minute and R per minute. The faster pulley is 1200 over the slower pulley is 550. And then if you do that, you're going to use a calculator to say 1200 divided by 550 and if you press your SD remember I told you you can make your calculator round off to two decimal places you say shift setup and then you say 6 and then you say 3 and then you press again SD it is 2,182 now when you've got 2,182, this is not your answer. When you are going to write now the speed ratio, you're going to say the speed ratio is 1 is to 2,182 because this is the ratio. When you're writing a ratio, you are saying it is to something is 2. Therefore, that's why we say 1 is to something, which is 1 is to 2,182. So that is how you can get your 2 marks there. The next question says calculate the design power of the electric motor in kilowatt. Now, if you still remember the formula, it said design power, I will use dp. Using your formula, you can refer to the formula. It is power, in this case, of the electric motor, I will say em times, if you still remember, is service factor. I will use the word sf for the service factor but you can always refer to the formulas there. Now, in the information given, you need now to find all the, 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 the uh, two uh, parts of the formula, which is the power of the electric motor and the service factor. So the key thing you have to look for is the electric motor. So let us look at the table. We have got the type of wedge belt. There is the part power of the electric motor. As I said, the key word there is the electric motor so there is the power of the electric motor which is 12,5 kilowatt and then times the service factor so we have to look for the service factor it says speed of the smaller pulley speed of the larger pulley type of start duty operation type duty hours per day now which means they want you that's why it is three marks here they want you to actually use the table to find the service factor and we are going to use the three information uh, the three parts of the information here given it says type of start it's heavy uh, duty operation type it is medium duty hours per day it is eight now remember it is a heavy start that's why it says type of start so we are going to go to our table remember it's table two which talks about the service factor we are going to go under the uh, the heavy start as well as the operation type which is the duty we are going to focus on medium and then under the hours per day we are going to look at 8 so if I go to my tables this is the table for the service factor now the information they gave me there they said under duty it was heavy I mean duty it was medium uh, sorry for that duty was medium I will cross-check to see that um, 
I got it right. And then the start is the one they said it's a heavy start. And then hours, they say it is eight hours. Let's just cross check to make sure we got this right. Um, this type of stat is the one that is heavy. Duty is medium, hours it is eight. So the type of stat is the one in this case that was heavy stat. So as you can see, stat is heavy, med duty is medium. So I'm going to use that information and say, I need to go under, in this case, I need to go under duty, which is medium. So I will go to medium duty, which is in this category. And then I have to go to heavy start. As you can see, I've got heavy and soft start and eight hours means it's 10 and under. When I do that, just not to cover that number, you can see that I'm getting my service factor there. Where the lines are meeting, it is where I'm going to get my service factor. And you can see that the lines meet at that particular block or that particular area where the service factor is 1,2. So here, I'm going to say times 1,2, which is uh, my service factor. So that process of finding 1,2 is the reason why they made this uh, three months. And then if you now get your calculator and you multiply uh, that information now that you're given, you are going to say 12,5 uh, times 1,2. And the answer you're going to get is 15. So that 15, remember design power, it is they did mention to say the the design power of the electric motor in kilo in kilowatt so you need to leave your answers also in kilowatt so that is how you find that then the last part of the question says uh determine the minimum pulley diameter and if you remember i said for the pulley diameter you need two things the first one you need the r per minute and in the R per minute, you focus on the faster pulley or the bigger number in this case. And then secondly, you need to find, you need to know your design power because the minimum pulley diameter needs the design power. And if you go to the previous question that we did in 1,12, we say the design power was 15 kilowatt. So now if you go to the faster pulley, you can see that uh, the faster pulley in this case is 1200 rotation per minute. As you can see uh, that part to say it is 1200 rotation per minute, that's the faster pulley. And then remember my design power, it is my 15 kilowatt. So if I go then to my formulas, for minimum pulley diameter I'm going to have in this case my faster pulley FP for faster pulley is 1200 my design power it is 15 kilowatt now with this information then I'm going to go under 1200 just a little bit under so that I don't uh, cut the numbers I think I just need under 1200 I think this is much better and then I need to go under 15 kilowatt this one is perfectly uh, meeting 15 kilowatt I'm just making it slanted but you can see where the lines are meeting just to so that the number is clearly visible and with that you can see that i have my minimum pulley diameter as 106 so also before i forget it is 106 don't forget the units the units are in millimeters so it's 106 uh, millimeters so we are going to then say 
determine the minimum pulley diameter we are going to say the minimum pulley diameter is equal to 106 millimeters so that is how you can use that information to find the minimum pulley diameter also without wasting time let us go to the next question it says a 16 n spb 16 newton spb wedge belt is fitted between an electrical motor and a hammer mill again you are given the information as you can see but i will encourage you um because i'm moving uh, at a much uh, faster speed it is very important for you to slow down and read all the information that is given because while you are reading the information you are able now to remember when you're doing the calculation that some of the information is already given in the table for example you you have to read things like design power of the electric motor is that basic power per belt is that power increment additional power per belt is that type of start it is soft duty operation type it is medium duty hours per day it is nine speed of the pulley on the electrical motor is that service factor is that correction factor is that so what are you noticing about this table they are giving you things that you are not given uh, in most cases for example you are usually asked to find the design power but now they gave you the design power you are usually asked to find the service factor but they now gave you the service factor so such things are very important as i said when you read the statement you are able to pick up uh, some things that are not commonly asked uh, but now they give you that information so now what is the question saying the first question says calculate the power of the electrical motor or the electric motor now what uh if i can just have some space below here or oh, actually if i can leave that and get a new page remember you know how to find the design power and the design power it is equal to power of the electric motor right times the service factor where do i get this you get this from the formulas you have to go to your formulas and you will find this so this is the design power now with that information let us look at what we are given we are given the design power in this case they were given the design power and were told the design power is 50 kilowatt so if you come to this formula let me uh not confuse it is this question we are given the, the, the design power now if we come to this formula that i just wrote under design power it is where you are supposed to write uh, that number and they told you the design power is 50 kilowatt so under design power this is where you write your 50 kilowatt and then you say it is equal to power of the electric motor and the question actually wants you to find that power of the electric motor as you can see that so it would be power of the electric motor which is what they want me to find times the service factor it means uh, i must be given the service factor i'm not supposed to put that bracket i must be given uh, the service factor and if i go to my statement they told me as i say there is the service factor and in this case our service factor there is 1,2 you can see that is the service factor so under service factor i have got 1,2 now the question is in mathematics what do you do when you have got power with the service factor and the design power on the other side now for you to find the power of the electric motor in this case you can see that you don't multiply as usual the 50 times 1,2 but for you to find the power you divide both sides by 1,2 what you do on the left you do on the right um, 1,2 this is the opposite of multiplication when the power and the service factor are multiplying to get rid of that 1,2 like that you have to divide so you don't multiply like previously so you have to divide so that you will remain only on the other side 
with power of the electrical motor. So you can see that we have divided by 1,2. We are left only with power of the electrical motor. And then using your calculator there, you are going to say 50 divided by 1,2. And if you press SD and then you say shift setup, 1,6 and 3 decimal places and you get that 41,667. Remember, power, whether it's design power, as long as the word power, your answer must always be in kilowatts. So this is the power of the electrical motor that they were looking for. Now, there is another way you can remember this formula. It is the triangle method that some use because some they get confused when it comes to this so you can do your triangle like that and then when you do your triangle like that you remember the formula we say is design power so dp is design power is equal to power p of em which is electric motor and then you say here times sf which is service factor so you can use that and then it can give you any of the three if I want design power, I will say power of electrical motor times service factor. But now if I want the power, like this question, it wanted me to find the power of the electrical motor. So I will say P E M. Then I will say equal to, you can see I've got DP on top there, which is DP. And then you can see there is a division line, which means you also say over. And then SF is under. And then you say S. F. This is another way of doing it. And then now you go to the uh, information that you are given. You are like the design power they told you is 50. So you are going to say 50 over the service factor they told you is 1,2. Then you are going to have again 41,667 in kilowatt. That is another way of using the information. Now the next question there says the corrected power per belt in kilowatt now this is a new question now that we didn't look at previously it talks about the corrected power per belt now for you to find the corrected power per belt as they say if you look at the question again keep on saying calculate calculate so which means it's purely calculations now if we go to our formulas and in formula number two it talks about the answer that we are looking for it is saying the corrected power per belt and the corrected power per belt it says basic power per belt plus power increment per belt times correction factor now it is very important to take note of this formula and write this formula as it is now you can see that corrected power per belt if i copied previously to my if I erase now because they want me to find the corrected power per belt in this case. So that um, you get this correctly because it is three marks that I don't want you to lose. And believe me, it is just plug and play. All the information will be given, but you just need to know how to write it. So corrected power per belt is equal to now I have to I'm not going to write the whole formula because it's long but I'm going to write what I'm is in the formula it says is equal to please take note there is a bracket there so I'm going to also have the bracket first and then after that it says basic power per belt so i'm going to look for this information which is called basic power per belt so i go to my statement and look for basic power per belt and see if i have that information given and you can see that i have basic power per belt just to erase so that i've got what i need and under basic power per belt look at that i'm given that information basic power per belt is 21,14 kilowatt so i'm going to say here 
21,14 kilowatt. Then I go to the formula. After basic power bill, there is a positive sign. As I said, it's black and blue. You also put the positive sign. Go again to the formula, and then it says power increment per belt. So I'm going to look for power increment per belt. And the second one you can see it talks about power increment, additional power per belt. The keyword there is increment. So power increment per belt. If you remove the uh, bracket, it will be simple power increment per belt as it states in the formula, which is 1,95 kilowatt. So if I do that, I'll also write 1,95 kilowatt. Then I go to my formula. And in my formula, after the power increment per belt, take note of that bracket. You close the bracket. So I'll also do the same thing and close the bracket. After that, follow the formula. There is a multiplication sign that I must have. So you also put your multiplication sign. And the next thing says you have to look for correction factor. So let me go and look for correction factor from the statement. And if you go to the last statement, you can see there is correction factor as 0 0.85. So I will have uh, 0 0.85 there. So this is how you find the corrected power per belt. And you just have to use the information given and use it as it is. Now, the next important thing for you to get your three marks, be careful of your calculator. You follow the formula as is. It starts with, with an open bracket. You also put your open bracket. Then you've got 21,14. And then plus, then 1,95, which is not a problem there. Of course, you can't put kilowatts. These are just units that you must maintain. So 21,14 plus 1,95. After that, there is a close bracket, which you must close. And then a multiplication sign follows. And then it's 0, 0,85. Then if you say equal to, you can see that you are getting 19,6265. Uh, As I said, shift, mod, 6, you say 3, so that you can get your 19,627. Now, students make an error. I just want to show you what students do. They just take that number and say 21,14. They say plus 1,95. And then they say times 0,85. If you do it like this, you won't get 19 now. You're going to get 22,798. Now you can see that this is different from the first answer that we got. Why? Because if you do not re respect the bracket, the answer will change. If you have done that, you have to play back. Put that bracket that you're supposed to put. And put that bracket that I was supposed to put instead of 22 now you can see the answer changes to 19,627 and you can see that there is the keyword there corrected power the moment they talk about power remember your units must always be in kilowatts so that is how you get your three marks for the corrected power per belt so that's the formula that you're going to use let us look at the next question. The next question talks about, it says 1.1.3, calculate the number of belts. So this is another important calculation. Just like the speed ratio, where I say they will not uh, give you the formula. So the number of belts also, they will not give you the formula. So when you are asked to find the number of belts, remember it is there in your book and you can uh, actually master it so that when you arrive in the exam room, you quickly write it down. And the formula says number of belts, in this case, it is equal to design power. Remember this formula is there in, the, in, your, in your textbook, but it is not there in your formula, over corrected power per belt. Usually it follows the previous question that they asked you. Corrected power per belt. And guess what? The corrected power per belt is the one that you're calculating. Usually they follow each other these questions. 
they usually ask it after the corrected power per belt. So design power, I mean number of belts is design power over corrected power per belt. Now we need to know what we put under design power, but you know already what you put under corrected power per belt. You are going to put 19,627. Now what do you put on top? You look for design power and if you remember well, they gave you the design power initially. They told you that design power of the electric motor is 50 kilowatt. So we are going to use that same number, in this case, 50 kilowatt. And then you can use that to find the number of belts. And it will be 50 over 19,627. And with that, if you press shift setup 6, 3, it will round it for you, which is 2,548. Now, when they talk about number of belts, just like um, I usually use this example to students to say, suppose you want to bake a cake, and for you to bake a cake, you need two and a half eggs to make that particular egg, uh, cake. How many eggs are you going to buy? You know that when you go to the shop, you cannot buy two and a half eggs. You have to buy three eggs if ever um, you wanted to uh, make a cake that requires two and a half eggs. So here is similarly, you cannot have 2,5 belts. You must give us the nearest number because the moment you have a comma, it means the number of belts that you need. Just like an egg, you cannot buy 2,5 eggs, you will buy 3 eggs. So same here, you will require 3 belts in this case. When there is a comma, always go to the next number following. So from 2, you go to 3 belts. So the number of belts that you need is three bells in this case please remember that so that is how you can answer these questions and you can see that this is out of uh, seven months if you followed these calculations it was just a good seven marks that you can add into your pocket